Welcome to the Female VC Lab podcast. Hello, Amal. In Hello. one line, can you give me your name, your title, and the name of your fund? My name is Amal Ainen. I am the managing director for North Africa and the Levant at Global Ventures. And what else did you ask me? Name, title, and name of your fund. I and the name of the fund it. is Global Ventures, yes, in case you didn't get it the first time around. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So what inspired you to become a venture capitalist or an investor? I never thought I would be in VC because I didn't even know what VC is when mm -hmm. I graduated from college, which is a little bit over 15 years ago. So it's been a while and VC was not a thing where I grew up at all. I grew up in Egypt, which is where I'm from. I always thought I would pursue a career in public policy. I was very, I studied economics. I thought this is how I can have a big difference in the world by being an economist, you know, at the Ministry of Finance or a Central Bank and be making decisions that kind of influence the lives of millions of people. And that was a plan. I think I worked my career accordingly, worked in banking and then at the IFC, the private arm of the World Bank. Uh -huh. And I did end up joining government. So I did end up like pursuing my dream to work at the Ministry of Finance at the minister's office, advising him on major macro public policy decisions. And lo and behold, you might be familiar with the Arab Spring in the Middle yes. East. <laughs> yes, <Arab Spring. laughs> it did happen, <laughs> which yes. did hit back in 2011, mm -hmm. accelerated, as we say nowadays with COVID, by the adoption of technology, uh, specifically platforms like Twitter and Facebook, that where people were more able to liberally just share their opinions and views and their want for freedom and not to be living under a dictatorship. And this is when I saw Egypt completely turn upside down, literally. We, mm -hmm. I grew up all my life having one president and all of a sudden Twitter removed the president. That's not something I ever imagined. And, and working in government was just not a very safe place to be at that point. Uh, so I went to business school here in the US. And this is when I really started to learn more about uh, entrepreneurship and more specifically VC. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked at a fund afterwards where we were doing more private equity and uh, some funds of funds investments. And through funds of funds, we started to see first time fund managers in, uh, in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And they were first time VC funds where we started to see the potential of entrepreneurship in the region, how much this is solving for highly underserved needs across financial services when it comes to fintech, but also healthcare, education. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to make the leap into VC and just work. I thought if I want to make a difference in the world, especially in a region like the Middle East, it doesn't have to be through government and being a part of public policy like I thought. And I my, this is my conviction now. There's a lot of potential working with entrepreneurs today who are really changing the landscape of the region. Wow, that's a wonderful story, too. Thank you so much for telling me that. So what is your investment thesis and what is the motivation behind your thesis? So the investment thesis is to invest in scaling or growth stage companies in the region. Focus on, at the firm, I focus on Egypt, which is the largest market in North Africa and the Levant. It's 102 million people population. But uh, more than that, not only do we have the human capital, but we also have a lot of big problems to solve for. COVID has shown how fragile the healthcare system was and you have over 60%, almost 70% actually out of pocket expenditure on healthcare and wow. only 1.3, yeah, doctors per thousand of people. That's so that is a lot. So over the last year, actually, health tech became a big focus where we started to see the importance and but also the need to accelerate teleconsultation, pharma, and greater access and better affordability of healthcare services to the population. And that expanded into other verticals too, where just the needs became even more clear that where we need to help entrepreneurs that are solving for ed tech now when schools mm -hmm. were locked down. The lockdown just showed how much of the problem of access to, to quality education has been because the system, again, is very fragile 
Baghdad, where the Egyptian population relies on private tutoring, and they were very ready to adopt uh, digital platforms where a family, um, like my mom used to do, have, have to not wait for you to finish school and then take you to a private tutor. And right. with traffic in Egypt and the expenses that go to private tutoring is as much as school tuition, and it's a very big burden on households. So now was a time, is this even needed? And now providing other alternatives. So I would say the thesis is really backing excellent entrepreneurs and calibers that are solving for underserved needs in the, in the Middle East and adopting technolo- te- technology solutions to accelerate much needed transformations and much needed innovations to solve for these needs. Wow, that's wonderful. So what are you currently learning or listening to or reading these days? I actually, I'm a big fan of podcasts and that's just because Wonderful. it also comes from the fact that in a country like Egypt, again, 100 million people population, Cairo is like probably over 20 million alone and traffic is just a miserable uh, problem that you know, aggravates our daily lives. And so we have invested in some B2B transportation solutions because of that. But it also means I get I spend minimum like two plus hours a day uh, in my car. And so podcasts are my saving grace where I feel like I'm at least learning something. My okay. favorite podcast right now is Brene Brown's Unlocking Us. I mm. love her talks on vulnerability and, and she has great inspirational speakers. And on books, I actually am, I lean a lot into now readings around how to own your story and narrative and also Mm. how to have difficult conversations especially for women from the Middle East where I think the stories are under told and not as heard as as much and we don't know how to own them and you know be proud of uh, that heritage. Wow that's that's wonderful. So I have a bonus question. This so, <laughs> well, yes. I always ask the fourth bonus question. Everyone gets. It. So, w- so when we're talking in two years of mall, hopefully we're talking before then. But two years from now, how do you see venture capital or investing having evolved or changed? How do you see that? I'll speak more from a, a global perspective and specifically for emerging markets. I think that'd be great. Yeah, the opportunity, the, there's a, an abundance, I would say, of capital in, in Western markets in the US, and it has been the source of innovation and the source of inspiration as well to the rest of the world. However, I see more global capital being allocated to emerging markets where the, the, it, the risks were initially high, but we're seeing these markets specifically for VC mature and become more and more de-risk as you have more regional funds like Global Ventures, but also mm-hmm. a number of regional funds in emerging markets raising capital and investing in, in, the, in their ecosystems. And I think this is much needed to de-risk the opportunities there, which have much higher growth because the, when you see how the Western populations are aging and how young the demographics are in right. uh, emerging markets Everywhere and their else. needs are and on the severity of the problems as well i think there are there's going to be a lot a greater allocation to emerging markets and this will be aided by homegrown vc funds that are uh, de-risking opportunities for capital to invest wow that's wonderful that's wonderful so how do people get into contact with you it's very easy it's amal at global.vc so it's a m a l at global bc all right thank you so much amal from uh, thank you global vc for being our guest on the female vc lab podcast thank you thank you for having me thank you